My guests today are Samin Khan and Hamayel Chaudhry. Guys, how you doing? Mm, really good. good. Welcome to my show. Welcome to Redmond, Washington. Thanks for having and, us. And uh, congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> We're uh, tell the viewers why I'm congratulating you. So uh, just yesterday we were announced the uh, world champions of Imagine Cup. <laughs> Uh, we're Team Smart, I'm representing Canada, and we're really happy uh, to be here. That's awesome. I'm really happy for you. Uh, and your um, s s Team Smart arm uh, involves this arm, which is smart. What uh, what problem are you trying to solve with this? So uh, within the prosthetics industry right now, it's really divided. On one hand, we have these cosmetic prosthetics, which they're they're affordable, but they don't really have much functionality, and so amputees can't really grasp objects with them properly. Okay, maybe just a piece of molded plastic. It exactly. Looks more like, like it's, a hand it's just for show. On the other hand, you have really expensive robotic bionic arms, and those cost tens of thousands of dollars because they require a lot of complicated uh, neuromuscular interfacing with right. a bunch of myoelectric sensors. And so it's hard to scale those up because they're so individualistically uh, programmed for the specific person. Oh, yeah. Now, so what we realize is we need a product that needs to be scalable um, kind of in order to make it cheaper and more accessible to most people. When amputees. you say scalable, what do you mean? So we don't want it to make it so that each, the arm is just. Uh, tailored just for the individual. We want it so that it's we can give the product and the service to somebody mm -hmm. and they can learn themselves to, to, to use the arms. And so the okay. arm itself is kind of learning along along the way. Okay, and that'll yeah. drive the cost down quite a bit. Exactly, if, yeah. If you're able to mass market something that yeah. they can then customize to them or own uses. Right, and if uh, you look at the cost as well, it's uh, one is 3D printed. The other part of it is that by leveraging computer vision, it's actually able to detect the object, determine what the appropriate grasp is, without having to require a bunch of neuromuscular interfacing as the other competitors in the market use uh, right okay. now. Okay, oh, so let's talk a little about the technology here. So you mentioned uh, you've 3D printed all the parts of this arm, mm -hmm. and then you're using some computer vision technology mm -hmm. to, to do what? Right, so basically the process, okay. it starts uh, in the palm right here. Mm -hmm. So let's say you want to pick up an object. You would point the camera at this object, okay. and the camera would grab frames from this video feed, mm -hmm. and the onboard computer would process this image and try and detect an object. Now, once that happens, the Raspberry or the onboard computer will figure out the most appropriate grip to grasp yeah. this object. Hmm. Um, and then there's actually a muscle sensor involved. So once your arm's in place and once you're ready to pick it up, you just flex your muscle and the arm will uh, grab, grab it. Awesome. Yeah. Can I see it? Yeah, of Let's course. Okay, we've got it all set up here. Mm -hmm. Tell me what we're going to see. So we'll just walk you through what's going on. So basically, you're going to have the arm approaching an object. You'll have this muscle sensor that uh, Hamile has attached to his arm right now. And basically, when he triggers a muscle movement, it'll send a signal to the smart arm to basically turn on the camera feed, start detecting what's going on uh, in front of it, and it'll pre uh, predict what the best grasp is. Mm. So uh, we'll, we'll do the demo now. So we'll have the camera approaching the object. Okay. So when Hamal's ready, he'll flex his muscle. Well, no, you've got, you know, the viewers can't see it, but you actually have a, an armband yeah, underneath your shirt. Yeah, right underneath the shirt, he's got an armband there. So when he flexes, uh, just about missed. You gotta aim it a little better, but yeah. it's, uh, but it did use the right grip. Yeah. Try that again. So again, a flex. There you go. Nice. And then once he basically loosens his muscle, you can just drop it right here. It'll it'll loosen the grip and it'll. Very drop. cool. Yeah. And that's recognizing it through um, cognitive services computer vision. Is that right? Yeah, Azure computer service, computer vision service. Yeah. Okay, but it's deployed locally. The model is deployed locally to this. You don't need connectivity to the internet to do this. Yeah. Correct? Right. So initially, we were using cognitive services. We mm -hmm. were just going by their image recognition. Mm -hmm. However, we started to run into problems with that approach because um, it, different different objects will obviously have different shapes and sizes. Mm -hmm. So then we decided to move to a more custom vision um, API, and. We were leveraging some of their uh, IoT edge technology mm -hmm. so that, again, like you said, we don't want the arm to only operate when it has internet access. That way it would actually be able to bring it on board. Very cool. Yeah. Uh, now, I, I, I first met you guys at the University of Toronto where you mm -hmm. won the Microsoft Prize for yeah. uh, best, best Microsoft hack, which yeah. seems like a little thing now that yeah. you're world champion. Oh, it was, it was huge at the, at the time. time. It was a big deal. <laughs> it was huge at the time. And your support during that time was, was great. Oh, like, thank you, you very much. You're helping right. us debug <laughs> from like the beginning. I'm glad I was uh, on the ground floor, but I'm also really proud of the, the work and the ideas you put into it in the six months or so since then. This is thank way, you. way you. more advanced since then. Tell, tell me a little bit about that process, because I know 
um, Amal, you moved to California. Yeah, that's And right. you were still back in Ontario, right? Yeah. And so how did that work out? Right. So we, we started back in January, uh, like you said, at the hackathon. Um, and after we finished the hackathon, we won the Microsoft API award. Um, we were really urged to apply to this thing called the Imagine Cup. Yeah. We won you yesterday. Also, we're, we're I think I planted yeah. the seed. So yeah. you planted the seed, so right? When you guys are rich and famous, <laughs> yeah. maybe you could buy me a beer yeah. or something. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> so for, um, we, we heard from you and we were like, we got thinking and we were like, you know, this actually may be a really cool idea. It seems like a very neat opportunity and it'll allow us to share this with a lot of other people as well. So we applied to the Canadian uh, national finals uh-huh. of Imagine Cup. Uh, we were flown out to Vancouver from there. Um, we won that and then that basically was our ticket to the global finals. Mm-hmm. Um, and between that time, sort of, Samin was in Toronto and I was uh, doing an internship in California. So it was, at times it was difficult to sort of coordinate um, working through the project and mm-hmm. getting things done. Uh, but what we ended up doing was actually, so I had the hardware to begin with. Mm-hmm. So what would happen is, uh, Samin being uh, more inclined with computer science, because that's what he's studying, and myself, robotics, um, he would write code, and he would send it to me, and I would deploy it onto the onto the computer mm-hmm. and test it out. And we sort of had this going back and forth. Oh, probably um, you had a hardware guy and a software and, uh, yeah, guy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And and so, <laughs> we, so we made it work, and it, it's been working so far. But um, mm-hmm. we definitely look forward to continuing to working together in the future. Um, that's great. Oh, let's see the trophy real quick. Yes. Oh, this is course. the World yeah. Championship Imagine there we Cup go. Trophy. I'm going to leave it up here because I don't want to block your faces, <laughs> yeah. but we get a good look at that. And uh, Satya Nadella, CEO of Microsoft. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Meeting right. him just backstage after the Met him afterwards. You've got a part of the prize is a mentorship. Yeah, that's right. Is with that, that. Uh, are you going to fly back for that? How does that work? Yeah, we're hoping to. Once that gets scheduled in with him, we're, we're, we're hoping to, if he's in Seattle, we're hoping to fly back here, get okay. him in person. There, yeah. oh, you got that. You got some cash prizes. You got a bunch of Azure hours. As oh well. yeah, yeah. yeah. A, it's cool. a, and of course, you've got uh, interviews on really popular shows like this. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. What's uh, so? What's next? Now, this is not just a, a, a nice project. You're going to turn this into a business, right? That's the goal. Yeah. So as soon as um, we get back to, or Samin's going to get back there first, but I'm going to get back to Canada in September. Mm-hmm. Um, so once we're there, we actually have uh, meetings already lined up with the Ministry of Innovation, Technology, and Economic Development. This um, is a, a government agency. Government. Yeah. Yes. Government. This is at the federal level. Yeah. Um, so we're trying to meet with them and really plan out how we're going to uh, launch this, because uh, we we really want to use all the resources available to us, um, and we've heard from everyone we've told so far that this technology is something that that, that really fills or addresses a gap that's mm-hmm. there right now. So we're going to try and best to scale it up. Hmm. That's awesome. Well, guys, I wish you the best of luck thanks and so congratulations. Today. Thank you. And thanks so yeah. much for being on the show. Thank thanks you. for having us. Thanks for having us. Technological innovations are most meaningful when they're used to impact the lives of your friends.